Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, another episode of Test Pack Please Ignore 2. So at the end of my last episode, I had been attempting to start to put together my tree farm here. Uh, kind of got stuck with the logistics of these new uh, kind of ducks from Thermal Dynamics. So I've gone away and fixed this. Uh, only problem is, is that currently there is a huge buildup of sludge and I need to clear this away before I can actually get this tree farm working efficiently. So the way I'm going to do that is to get myself, if we go into here, a void pipe. So I need to make myself a void fluid pipe. So first we need to make a void pipe, which is some black dye, piece of glass and redstone. Then I need to make some waterproofing, or pipe sealant, which I'm going to get from a slime ball. Uh, it took me ages to actually find uh, either slime or cactus. Eventually I found one of those like slime islands all the way over there somewhere. It took me ages. I had to like nerd pole all the way up to it as well. It was, uh, was, was quite interesting. I was going to sleep for the night as well. Sorry about the uh, test pack, please ignore chat. Uh, that'll just come up occasionally. Uh, so what we're going to need. So we're going to need some black dye or an ink sack. We're going to need a piece of glass. We're going to need a slime ball. And we're going to need a piece of redstone. There we go. Marvellous. Great. Let's make the void pipe. So that would be that, that, and that. So we make a void transport pipe. Then we need the pipe sealant. Okay. Why isn't it doing that? Let me have a quick look. So why isn't it making pipe sealant? It says slime ball. Yep. Pipe sealant. Come on. Can I just do it like that? Nope. Why isn't this not... It says slime ball, right? I'm not going totally insane. Pipe sealant, shapeless crafting, slime ball. Should make pipe sealant. Ugh. So apparently I will need to find cactuses apparent, uh, at some point. Uh, I have no idea where I'm going to find that. Can I smelt a slime ball? Nope, it's just not working. Why are you not turning it into pipe sealant? That is really weird. Okay, so I don't know if there's a glitch or not, or whether or not that's just freaky, freaky deking out. But apparently, I'm going. I'm actually going to have to find some cactus green because I have no. The only way to get it is from cactus, and I actually have like no desert biomes anywhere near around here. So at the moment, my tree farm is essentially useless until I can get a void pipe. And as far as I'm aware, there's no other kind of void pipe around, or no other like void tank or void pipe or anything like that. Um, let me just check a tank um i mean the only other way i could do it was it would be occasionally kind of like voiding off um i don't know um kind of having a tank voiding it off occasionally and then getting rid of it but i don't know i'm just trying to have a look see if there's any kind of like tank here which would actually uh suck it all up and get rid of it for me so i've got a ender io fluid tank uh ender tanks no good so yeah, that's kind of annoying, the fact that it says I can use uh, a slime ball and then a slime ball doesn't actually work. So yeah, I really am going to have to find myself a cactus a cactus somewhere, which I have no idea I'm going to do it. Um, okay, so while I can't do that now, this brings me on to my next point. So I made a bit of a boo-boo. I actually recorded the last episode, or what will be this episode, uh, in which I actually made some of these mechanism machines and then realised that I'd left my OBS settings on stream instead of record. So nothing that I did to actually, uh, in the creation of these machines, actually got recorded. I'll just go through what I did quickly, though. So basically what I've done here is I've made some metallurgical infusers, and what these allow me to do is these two are going to allow me to create steel. So I'll show you how we do that. So let's go and grab some iron. Do I have some spare iron? There we go. I do have iron. I've got nine, which is a perfect amount. Uh, actually, I don't really need nine. Uh, I only really need... Uh, let's let's make three. Reason being is that in this episode, what I'm going to do is start making preparations to go to the nether. Because what I'm going to do is make myself some better uh, tools. So what I'm going to make in no, what we're going to do in the next episode is make some really fancy pants tinkers construct tools so like the hammer the um what's it called the hammer my brain started going here the hammer the excavator and the lumber axe i think i'm going to make yeah that, that's what i'm going to make so uh, that'll be for the next episode but first what i'm going to need to do is let's make some steel so what we're going to need to do is grab a source of carbon now let's grab some charcoal out of these sterling generators that aren't doing anything just because i've got a load of spare charcoal uh, once this tree farm's up and running that'll create an excess of charcoal which will go in this uh void barrel here we've got to uh 
wait for that. So basically what I need to do is put a source of carbon in here, which is going to turn the iron ingots into, should be, let's double check this, it will be, nope, it's going to go to here, which is enriched iron. And then what we can then do is turn that enriched iron into steel, which is basically how you turn iron into steel in the first place, by increasing its carbon level. So we are basically using this metallurgical infuser to do that for us. So we're infusing carbon within our steel. So she's going to uh, wait for all three of them to process up. One, two, and we'll get the third one in a second. Because uh, basically what I'm going to need to do is, if I want to go to the nether and mine up, so I'm going to make all these tools out of Ardite and Cobalt. So if we have a look at Cobalt ore, uh, it doesn't actually, it's not actually going to tell me what I need to mine up, is it? No. But basically I'm going to need to use this uh, a steel. So if we have a look at steel, um, we're looking for the pickaxe head or a steel pickaxe. So uh, as you can see, the mining level on there is cobalt, which basically means that I can actually mine up cobalt and ardite from the nether, which is quite cool. So let me drop the three steel in here. Then what I'm going to do is let's grab you out the ingot cast. And we're going to need the pickaxe head cast and also a tool binding cast. Oh, that's a material cost of 0.5. I don't think that really matters too much. I'll probably make that out of, say, I don't know, um, iron or something like that, maybe. Um, I'm not sure what the best material to make the tool binding out of is, but we'll just make it out of some iron, for example. So let me just drop in an iron bar into there. Or do I make it out of something else? Um, what else have I got? I've got lead, I've got tin, copper. Um, no, I think iron will be fine. Let's make an iron tool binding. Just melt, that, melt down this ingot. So you can see some steel there and iron there in the smeltery. I do like the kind of the visual thing that it does. So we go, so we've got our steel in there, so we can pour that out into our pickaxe head. Marvellous. So that's got our steel pickaxe head. Fantastic. Saying that, if I repair that up, I might be able to swap it out, but because I haven't got iguana tweaks on, I may as well just build a whole new pickaxe. Let's pop you up, put the tool binding in in a second. Oh, apparently that only costs one material. Okay, so I'll make my tool binding out of, if I can take that iron and got out of them. Um, there we go. So I can actually make a steel tool binding as well. So I'm just going to put the ingot cast back in, pour out a bit of steel like so. Put these two away. Uh, we need a stick. There we go. Fantastic. So we can now put together our fancy pants new steel pickaxe there we go one steel pickaxe mining level cobalt fantastic which means we can now mine up anything we want grab up that steel and got and put it away got two in there at the moment um so yeah so that's what the one of what two of these metal metallurgical infusers does and then basically what i also decided to make was the first tier of mechanisms or processing which is basically just an enrichment chamber and an energized smelter so it's a fairly straightforward line so the enrichment chamber does something similar to the crusher or, or no sorry does something similar to the pulverizer or the macerator from old industrial craft and basically what you get from the uh, so if we go to say for example iron ore uh, if we have a look in here uh, if we go along to the so a quick look uh, i'm sure it should be in here pulverizer, duction smelter, what's it called? The enrichment chamber. Um, I don't know why it's not showing it, but let's have a look at iron ingot. No, 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 no. Let's just go for iron. So we are looking for the mechanism bits of iron, if I can see it. Here we go. So basically what this metallurgical infuser is going to make is not the crusher we want, Iron dust. Okay, here we go. So it's actually showing it now. So you can use iron ore in the enrichment chamber and you get two iron dust. And then you basically just put that iron dust in the energized smelter. So later on, um, we get... So when we want to make that iron dust in the next level of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mechanisms uh, or processing tree. We will be putting dirty iron dust in there instead. And we get that from... So the dirty iron dust we get from the crusher... Uh, and you get that from iron clumps. And the way you get iron clumps is by putting iron ore in a purification chamber. You get three iron clumps from that. So obviously it processes down and you get three iron ingots. Uh, so we're going to be making the... I've already made the... Um, what's it called? The crusher for later on. Uh, so basically what I'll be doing is just moving all this down. Uh, and then we'll also be making... Uh, what, what else are we going to need? So we're going to be needing the purification chamber. So... A lot of these kind of recipes require this uh, steel casing, which is steel surrounding osmium. And osmium is Mechanism's own um, kind of ore, 
ingot kind of thing. Uh, basic control circuits that we use a lot in basically all of Mechanism's recipe is really easy in this mod pack. Uh, it's been changed a bit since test pack, please ignore one. Um, you used to have to create the um, enriched alloy, I think, first, but nowadays you literally just combine some redstone in a metallurgical infuser with the osmium ingot, which is why we've got the third one, because these two are both carbon ones. This one is my redstone one. Um, but let me just show you how these two work for now. So this is going to be my basic doubling until I can get the next tier set up, which isn't too difficult. I mean, tier three, tier two isn't actually that difficult for a uh, mechanism. So let me just grab, say, for example, 10 bits of iron ore. We can process this up through the basic system. So let's do that now. We run that through there. And these recipes are fairly straightforward. So let's have a look at the uh, it purifi no, not purification chamber. It is the enrichment chamber. So if we go for a chamber. So the enrichment chamber is quite simply just some redstone, some iron, one of these steel casings, and then two of these control circuits. Nice and straightforward. And then the smelter is again basically the same recipe except you're using two bits of glass instead of the iron so these are really simple to get going on straight away as you can see they're quite loud though uh, they don't use up a whole lot of RF either and this is kind of processing up I'm just going to move away from these while I talk for a second because they're really quite offensively loud let me just check my volume settings oops so there's Vizier settings I want uh, music and sounds yeah let me just drop down the master volume to like 50% there we go that'll be fine fantastic right that's a little bit that's a little bit quieter great so what do we want to do for the rest of this episode so if we want to go to the nether i'm going to want to jetpack i'm not going to want to go there but that's some way of hovercrafting around so let's have a look at jetpack so we've only got a couple of options in this mod pack we've got the advanced nano chest plate which uh, we'll obviously be making late which i'll probably make later on so this is going to what i'm going to be using as my armor more than likely will be the gravitation suites uh, jetpack so i'll probably make that in an, in an upcoming episode once i've got the resources to make it which will require the uh, industrial craft electric jetpack followed by the advanced electric jetpack followed by making the advanced nano chest plate i will look up how to make this because this is going to be complicated with things like energerium dust it's going to re require some is this can i do i have to use electronic circuits in this recipe nowadays okay i remember um in the old one you used to be able to use the mechanism ones in here so i'm going to have to set up a kind of a basic um also I'm looking for um, my brain slightly gone I'm gonna set up a basic industrial craft um, setup uh, at some point before I can actually start making this so what we're gonna do first of all is probably make the mechanism jetpack so this is gonna require some tin some refined iron slash steel and a basic control circuit so we can put that together real quick uh, it's gonna run off hydrogen so we're gonna to need to come up with a way of actually producing hydrogen by the end of the episode but let's build the jetpack first so let's grab some tin so I'm going to need a bit more tin. So let me grab, uh, where's all my tin gone? There we go. So we're going to process this up through my system over here, which is apparently almost done with my iron. So it's smelting up the last few of these. So just see this last little bit of iron dust. Uh, so what I really need to do is get a chest down there for now. As you can see, there's a, I've already wired up the, um, the enrichment chamber, wherever it is, the crusher, sorry. I already put this together and then realised I didn't actually need it for this first tier of mechanism, which was quite silly of me. Uh, but let's make a chest real quick, like so. There we go, and this is going to make all our ingots. So what I'm going to do is grab all of our ingots out of here, like so. There we go. So this is going to be my raw materials for now. I'm probably going to have a rearrange, move some of these out of here. Uh, I'll probably just get a... Um, What's it called? Um, a dolly from Gabba to move all these uh, chests around. Have I got this set to auto eject? Auto eject is now on. So whenever this completes an ingot, it's just going to throw it directly into this chest, which is quite cool. You'll see him coming in there now, which is quite nice. Uh, a little explanation on about how these configurations work. So it's similar to thermal expansion, but slightly more confusing. So when you've got, what you've got to worry about with um, is this auto eject? That is auto eject on. Uh, what you got to worry about with mechanism is just double checking. So all of these colors don't change. Whereas with like thermal expansion, you can determine like what colors are which and stuff like that. But with uh, mechanism, you just got to remember that this these colors basically correspond to these colors here. So the input here is red or dark red. The output here is dark blue. So at the moment, I've got the input doesn't really matter, but the output is dark blue on the right hand side here, which is going to auto eject into this energized smelter. So the auto, the energized smelter again is like red and blue so we've got the red on the left hand side here taking things in you can have it coming in from the top which will probably be for later on when i start to automate this more with applied energistics 
and then also the output again is dark blue and it's auto ejecting into this chest fantastic so we're going to need those do i need two steel i do only need two steel fantastic we're also going to need that tin like so fantastic uh, apparently this is mech oh yeah this is mechanism tin and i want uh, this is old tinker's construct tin which is fine uh it just depends on how you've processed it and we're also going to need a load of osmium i think i've not quite got enough for this gas tank by the looks of things so what we're going to do is um doo -doo 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 -doo, grab a little bit of osmium so grab, grab five for example just just as a nominal amount so we're going to be using the smeltery less and less now. The only thing we're going to be using the smeltery for now is just to make tools. So we're going to, I'm going to be using it to make Ardite and Cobalt tools in the next episode. But apart from that, it's basically now redundant. Now I've got this kind of mechanized system for producing all of my uh, all of my wares. Uh, I will upgrade this with speed upgrades and uh, energy upgrades at some point. So if we have a look at uh, mechanism. We have the two upgrades if I can find them. We've got the item speed upgrade and the energy upgrade. Now, you're going to want to use both of these because basically the more speed upgrades you put in these machines, the more energy they take. So you're going to want to increase the amount of held energy so it doesn't run out while it's processing. So you probably need kind of say as a rough estimate about a two to one ratio between energy and speed. So two energy to one speed. That's just a rough estimate. If you've got a really good power system running around your base, you can probably get away with more energy to speed. But just early game, just, be, just bear that in mind that the speed does take up a hell of a lot more energy and you're going to want to uh, use it up. Right, I'm going to grab the... Apparently my hatch is broken. Great. So let me just whack, whack a doodle of this up. Like so. Just going to nick this crafting table. Put it a bit closer. So let me just drop it down, say, here. So uh, we're also going to need some iron dust. So let me grab a an iron ingot from there. I'm just going to turn off auto eject off for a second let me put the iron can I actually do this in the enrichment chamber no I'm actually gonna need the crusher for that I think so let me grab the crusher for example um, let me just double check this so I'm gonna want to go back to the jetpack here we go so if we go to jetpack um, so I'm going to need iron dust from mechanism, which I can get from the enrichment chamber or the crusher by crushing up an ingot. Okay, yeah, so I'm going I'm going to need the crusher here. So let me grab my crusher. Yeah, I got my crusher. I need an extra hardened flux duct. I'm going to repair this stone hatchet as well. So can I do that real quick? There we go. Don't know why I decided to throw out two uh, bits of cobblestone there, but never mind. Let me just repair my hatchet. Show you what I'm going to do in a second. So I'm going to put another hole in the floor here. Don't really care about the uh, the wood. Got plenty of it around me. Considering I'm in a redwood forest. So let's grab this crusher. Plonk the crusher down. It's going to charge up almost instantaneously. We can then put an iron ingot in there. This is going to crush it up. As you can see it's working. Working nicely. Crushing it up into uh, little tiny pieces. Marvellous, there we go. And then we're also going to need two, one final thing. Let me grab a piece of a couple of pieces of redstone from over here. I'm going to do some strip mining over the weekend. Like I said, when I thought I'd record this, I used up a lot of resources. And um I saw I want this particular one, don't I? So put some redstone in there, grab a piece of iron. No, no a piece of osmium I need, don't I? There we go. Put you in there. It used to be iron, I'm fairly sure, but they've changed it to osmium now, which is fine. It's making more use of osmium. It was a little bit superfluous before. Um, yeah, I can't remember what I was talking about now. My brain's totally gone. Eh, never mind. Um, right, jetpack. Can I make that? Nope, because I need to make my gas tank first. There's one gas tank. We should be able to then make a jetpack if it will let me. So, uh, was it basic control circuit? Yeah, basic control set when that flicks over, and then we want to do tin, tin, tin. There we go. One jetpack. Fantastic. That's what I like to see. I love it when a plan comes together. Um, so we now have a jetpack. I can make it an armor jetpack, which will require a block of steel, a couple of bronze, and some diamond dust, which I don't think I really have spare right now. I'll probably do that later on, but uh, for now, I need to charge this up, so I'm going to need some hydrogen. Right, okay, so how do we get hydrogen? Let's have a quick look at NEI. So I'm going to want mechanism hydrogen, but let me go to mechanism because I'm fairly sure I need a particular machine. 
I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. So, electrolytic separator, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so enriched, you can still make enriched alloys, but you don't use them for making control circuits anymore. That's fair enough. And this electrolytic core. Okay, so we're going to have to try and make this now. So, I've still got time. I'm not in a hurry. So, let's start off by making. So, we need what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, enriched alloys, which I can do. It's not too bad. So let me get a couple more pieces of redstone just so we can actually start to make the enriched alloys. So put you in there, the metallurgical infuser. Then we need seven pieces of iron. Awesome. Put you in there like so. That's going to start enriching. Uh, what else did we need? So we're going for the electrolytic separator. Here we go. Grand. We also need an electrolytic core, which is going to require two pieces of ground up osmium, one piece of gold, and one piece of iron. So we need iron, gold, osmium. Fantastic. Right, let's start crushing you up. Later on, I'll probably be using the pulverizer instead to do this, especially when I want to automate it, and it's going to be chucked in directly into my M ME system. Oh yeah, I added the Aroma Backup mod into this particular mod pack because I realised after I'd recorded this episode that if I'd had a proper mod pack, a proper mod, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a proper backup uh, tool in here, I wouldn't have, that wouldn't have been a problem because this Aroma would have uh, automatically backed up my save file and I would have just been able to kind of like um, revert back to an earlier save. So I've added that in, so if you see that pop up occasionally, that's just me adding that in myself just so I've got backups of my saves, which is quite cool now in case everything goes horribly wrong. Has it done it before now? It's done it a couple of times now, so it's done it when I booted up and it looks like it's going to do it every 30 minutes, which is great. So let's grab all this osmium out. So for some reason this gold looks really bizarre in my hand. It's because it's like really low pixel, this uh, kind of like zoomed in. Uh, okay, so we are going to need these enriched alloys, but apparently I am out of redstone. So let's grab a couple more pieces. Not the end of the world. Under. There we go. Uh, this is also going to help me find the cactus as well. Because if I can fly around uh, with my jetpack, then I will be able to find the cactuses a lot faster. To actually get my tree farm up and running again. I don't know where... There's like an item around here somewhere. I don't know if it's on the ground or something like that. Oh yeah, it's that piece of wood that I mined up. Um, that real red dot on my mini-map is basically dropped items on the ground. So, uh, how are we doing? So the crush is all done. You are all done. Great. So I can put together my electrolytic core. Like so. Boom. We're also going to need a couple more bits of redstone and four bits of iron. Okay. So four bits of iron. And we need two bits of redstone. Here we go. How are we doing with time? Still got tons of time. If I'm going for half an hour. Okay, so let's put together our electrolytic separator. I'm going to need a way of powering this up. We're also going to need a water source, because basically what this is going to do, this machine, is it uses an electrolysis, so it's basically a fancy electrolyzer. Uh, kind of some of the research I do for my PhD is to do with like hydrogen gas separation and stuff like that from water. But basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. Quick science lesson. Um, so we're going to need a source of water. So I'm going to need a uh, aqueous accumulator. Okay, so that is going to require a machine frame, a pneumatic servo, which I made earlier when I was trying to figure out the difference between all the new thermal um, dynamics. So, whereas you used to be able to just use a pneumatic servo on these item ducts, you now need to use servos to extract and filters when you're kind of restricting what goes into different machines. So, I will show you what I did with them maybe at some point. But uh, I do have a pneumatic servo already made. Uh, the copper gear is just going to be iron and copper. So... Let me grab some copper from here just to be on the safe side. Because I'm not entirely sure how much copper I have remaining. I've got nine, so it's not too much of a problem, but I'll make up some more just to be on the safe side. We need two bits of iron, like so. Uh, what are we going to need for the machine frame? So basic machine frame, come on, there we go. So I need four more bits of iron, four bits of glass, and a tin gear. So tin, one more piece of iron, um, and then what was it? Machine frame basic. Oh, there we go, basic. So yeah, I need four more bits of iron on top of that. So there we go. So that's all the iron that I need, I think. I need a bucket, which I've got spare, and a couple of bits of glass. Cool. So this should go relatively quickly. 
there's I need more I, I, I need like six pieces of glass altogether and I have ten so perfect marvelous everything's going well right so machine frame so we need to do tin gear there we go tin gear iron 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 glass 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 there we go machine frame uh, we need two copper gears marvelous um, we've got the pneumatic servo we need a bucket dealizer although there's not a hole in this one there we go so we've made a pneumatic servo we need a fluid duct which is copper either side of some lead good job I decided to make some more copper is it processing I've got copper duct oh yeah I turned off auto eject didn't I Oops, a daisy. So that's going to start processing some copper. We need two bits of copper, a piece of lead. Should have some lead free. Yes, I do. So just waiting for that copper to pop in there. There we go. Okay, so yeah, it's mechanism copper as opposed to anything else. Not the end of the world. It all still works. Right, we also need a source of a couple of buckets of water, basically. So I'm going to make a new bucket because I've just realised that I've destroyed what destroyed one of mine in the making of the aqueous accumulator so let's make a second bucket like so uh, so we need to do one two three like that need two buckets of water so let's go get it not exactly far to go we've got like plenty of water just over there no mobs down here so I'd have to worry about getting uh, shanked in the back by a skeleton or a spider so one two buckets of water from my nice little pond outside of my base. Could be a nice area to grow things like uh, reeds and stuff like that. Close this up. So we then need to get myself a hardened flux duct like so to power up my brand new electrolytic separator. We're going to need some wood to kind of hold the water. So let me grab some of this. There we go. Marvellous. So I'm also going to have to find a way of... I don't know if I'm going to be able to put my jetpack directly in here or not, but I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. So that will go down there. Flux duct will go there. Electric separator will go there. It's gaining power. Good. Let's move this torch. Put it down, say, there. Or even there. Would be probably better. Uh, we then need to house the water. So let me do one, two, three. Put the aqueous accumulator down in there. Need two buckets of water, so one and two. Fantastic. Need some fluid ducts, so um, one and boom. So that should now be getting water. It will be. So I want to void off, so dumping oxygen. I've got hydrogen. Can I just put the jetpack in here? I can. Yes. Look at that. Beautiful. So this is just going to now separate out water uh, and fill this up with hydrogen. I don't know how much it holds but let me have a quick look so it holds 24,000 hydrogen uh, like I said at the moment I don't need the uh, I don't need the I'll need the oxygen later on but for now I only need the hydrogen so later on I'll be dumping the hydrogen and keeping the oxygen but for now I want the I want the hydrogen for the jetpack and um, I don't need the oxygen the oxygen will be for the next tier of mechanism uh, but this will all get rearranged before then don't you worry Right, okay, this will probably will be moved to some other part of my base. Like I'll probably have like a separate little mechanism area over there for all processing and things. This central area is just going to be for any, any ME stuff, so this will be where my ME controller goes, and I'll branch it off from this particular central location to all the edges of my base. But uh, this is going to take a while to charge up, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try this out. So, oop. Okay, so does it have a hover mode? Uh, that's hats mod. I don't want that. So um, this is that would be the mini map menu. So let me just have a quick look at options controls. I'm going to want mechanism, mechanism, mechanism mode switch is on M. So is there any way that I can retask that something that isn't being used? Uh, probably not. Oop, is T not being used? Ah, T is not being used. So okay, so now it's, oh wow, look, it's in hover mode now. So as you can see, it's using up. A reasonable amount of hydrogen but not as much as I thought it would so we just got to keep an eye on that so all oh right so I've got to take T off right regular mode so disabled I probably want right okay that's pretty cool so the jetpack works awesome 
that's what I like to see. So this, I'm going to fill this up with as much hydrogen as possible. Uh, it's going to take up a fair amount of power, but it's not the end of the world. Oh wow, so that's being drained. So I really am have to, going to have to go find myself some cactus, um, cactus green as soon as possible because this electrolytic separator is apparently using up a fair amount of energy. So I'm going to have to go hunting for that by the next episode. So I'll probably take this with me. Have it on regular mode and just use it to get up to high places and stuff. So I'm going to have to go searching for a desert biome to find myself a cactus. Will be interesting, but I'm sure I'll find it. Uh, so wish me luck. But like I said, for the next episode, we'll be making we'll be taking a trip to the Nether, finding ourselves some tools. Uh, so I'll probably get this all kind of working off camera, hopefully. And then next episode, we'll be taking a trip to the Nether to mine up some cobalt and some ardite, and also grab other good stuff like glowstone and soul sand and things which we might want to use later on but this is going to run out of power pretty soon so it's not going to get that much hydrogen but uh, not the end of the world once i can make this sustainable it should be fine okay as always guys don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode apart from that thanks for watching and i'll see you next time goodbye